Hey everyone. So this week we're going to talk about scope um, and I have three things I want to make sure that we cover in our lecture this week. One, I'm going to introduce you to the topic, to the concept of scope. Number two, we're going to spend a little bit of time visualizing scope and thinking about how we can visually demonstrate the scope of a project. And number three, we're going to talk a little bit about determining information sources for the best fit for a project and scope can help with that. So again, scope is identifying that you have that gap in your knowledge. You recognize how much information you need to complete your work so you understand the breadth and depth of your project. And then you recognize the appropriate sources of information to inform your work. So the breadth or broadness of your project really talks about or really relates to the number of topics to be included. If you have a topic that is or a paper or a project that is going to be very um, introductory or narrow in breadth, that means you only have a few topics included in this report or in this project and then it moves down, right? It moves down this little chart and you might have foundational that's somewhere in the middle there about the breadth or broadness of your project and then you might have a comprehensive project with a lot of breadth where you try to take in every aspect of this conversation and distill it. So knowing the breadth of your topic can really help you figure out how to start thinking about approaching your work. So the depth of your project, um, this is the depth or maybe the deepness of your work. So this is the amount of detail needed on your project or in your work. Again, just like in breadth, it can be kind of divided into three subsections. If you have a project that only requires a little bit of depth, so maybe a simple or very shallow depth, that means you don't need to go very deep into that subject. A summary might be okay for a project like that fundamental depth or deepness of that project might mean that you need to demonstrate you have a fundamental understanding so you go a little bit deeper into those topic areas. Um, if you have very deep or complex depth for your project it might mean that you're going very very deep across many many resources to get a very comprehensive um, and full idea of that topic. This would be a very, very research intensive subject. You would likely have to search many different databases or bring in many different types of sources. One strategy for you to use when you're trying to determine scope is to visualize the scope of a project. This might be something like um, a concept map. This might be those know, want to know how, learn, those KWHL charts that we saw in the last chapter, um, brainstorming sessions. All of these are really great ways to visualize your scope and visualize your understanding of a particular topic area. These are also a great way to help you determine your next steps. So maybe you're stuck or maybe you're just starting out a project. You can see what you know, you can start to see what your gaps are and what questions you may have. Um, and again, there are a lot of tools. Maybe you have something that works just fine on your phone for you, but pen and paper works just as well. As you can see, I have used um, an online site called bubble.us, B-U-B-B-L dot U-S. Um, it's an online free tool to use for concept mapping. Um, and here I've laid out a concept map for scope. And as I was thinking about scope, um, and you can see in this concept map, gosh, there are a lot of levels to it, a lot of places you can um, elaborate on. And then I also threw in some questions I had. I wrote out one question I had about foundational breadth. Um, reasonable is a very subjective term, so I'm curious to know what reasonable might look like for different areas. So you can see I even have some questions included in my concept map, and that's a great way for you to kind of start to see how you understand and what you understand, and maybe where you need to know more. So we'll touch a little bit on determining information sources for the best Fit. So this means determining information sources that are most likely to be relevant to your research. Again, that's going to really depend on your scope. So maybe you have a broad but shallow scope for a project. 
So this means you need to gather information from many different resources, but you don't need to cover it very deeply. So this might be a situation where you look for many sources across different information types. This could be newspapers, books, primary sources. You're looking for lots of different stuff to help back up your work. Maybe instead, you determine you have a project with a very deep but a very narrow scope. So what this means is you have a lot of depth, a very complex understanding, very, very thorough understanding of that topic area, but narrow in its breadth, meaning you only need one or two topics to cover. This might mean you're looking for sources across one information type on a particular subject area. This might be research articles using a very similar search across many different databases. Fun thing about databases, not every single database has everything in it. Um, and we'll talk about this a little bit later in class, but just know that one reason you would want to search across many different databases and not just in the library's catalog is not every database has the same stuff. So that's it for scope. Um, so I will say scope is kind of a strange um, and abstract concept like much of research. So if you don't get it right away, that's okay. Like a lot of research as you practice, things will start to click and things will start to make sense. So don't worry. <laughs> it's okay if you don't understand right away. It's a strange thing. And again, scope is not something that people really explicitly think about when they go and they do a research paper. Again, I know as a student, I know I didn't really ever think about this. And gosh, I wish I knew what I know now as a librarian. Um, but knowing scope, and again, spending a little bit of time thinking about scope, um, helps inform you of your next steps, helps you figure out what you know, what you need to know, what you don't know, um, and it can, uh, so all of that can really benefit you. I will also say it can be an excellent idea to revisit scope after you've done some searching on your own or done some research on a project. You might be surprised with what you know and what new questions you have. So that's it. Happy searching.